A killer lake in Africa looks like paradise, but it's hiding a deadly secret. The engineers aboard the floating power station on Lake Kivu could only watch nervously as the volcano in the distance erupted violently, sending tremors rumbling through the water behind them. It was not the lava shooting from Mount Nira Gongo last May that spooked them, but the enormous concentrations of potentially explosive gases within the Lake Kivu, one of Africa's great Rift Valley lakes lying between Rwanda and the Democratic Republic of Congo. It's flanked by rolling green hills, tumbling into grassy, glassy waters. Kivu is not quite the picture of tranquility, it seems so. And according to Francois Darchambeau from Kivu, Kivu Wat, a company that extracts gas from the lake's water for electricity, thousands of years of volcanic activity has caused a massive accumulation of methane and carbon dioxide to dissolve in the depths of Kivu. It's enough to prove monumentally destructive in the rare, rare event they were released. And if triggered, a so-called limnic eruption, limni meaning lake in, Greece, in Greek, a limnic eruption would cause a huge explosion of gas from deep waters to the surface, resulting in large waves and a poisonous gas cloud that would put the lives of millions at risk said Darshambo, environmental manager at Kivu Wat. He said, this is what we call a killer lake. This is what the limnologist says. He's an expert in freshwater systems. Only three such lakes exist in the world. Kivu, lakes Nios and Monun in northwest Cameroon. The latter two experienced limbic eruptions in 1980s, but the bigger disaster at Nios suffocated more than 1,700 people in a toxic release of carbon dioxide gas. Please support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box. But these catastrophes occurred in a rural area, whereas some two million people would be at risk of such a similar disaster involving Lake Kivu, said Duchambeau. In both Rwanda and Democratic Republic of Congo, many live in fear of the lake's harmful potential, and stories abound of swimmers disappearing into its depths after being asphyxiated or pulled under. The world's first, the lake, however, poses both peril and promise. Kivu Wat, which says that it is the only project of its kind anywhere in the world, saw an opportunity to tap these abundant gases for energy generation. A 20-minute speedboat ride is required to reach Kivu Wat's unique floating platform, a compact tangle of pipes and buoys as high as a multi-story building moored in the Rwanda part of Lake Kivu. With a defending, deafening roar, the facility pumps water saturated with carbon dioxide and methane from about 1,150 feet, 350 feet uh, to the surface. And as it rises, the water and gas separate as the pressure changes. They, it's like opening a bottle of soda, said Kivu Wat director Prisham Nunda who described the project as halfway between a thermal and a renewable energy plant. The extracted methane is sent through a pipeline to a second facility located onshore in Rwanda, where the gas is transformed into electricity. The carbon dioxide is pumped back into the lake at a precise enough depth to ensure the delicate balance is not upset. And the company says it hopes that removing methane could over time reduce pressure within the lake possibly lowering the risk of a limnic eruption. It was frightening, quote-unquote, but fears of such a disaster were reawakened when Nirangongo, an active volcano north of Kivu, Kivu in the Democratic Republic of Congo, roared to life in early 2021. The lava flow killed 32 people and destroyed hundreds of homes as earthquakes shook the region, and a second wave of lava pushed deep into the earth under the lake itself. 
for their sta sta stations, Kivu Watch engineers watched the sky turn red and angry, and Nunda said it was very frightening. When the rates of earthquakes and the frequency of earthquakes started to rise, no one could really say what would happen. A shutdown was considered, but the engineers held their nerve. Suspended, suspending operations would have serious consequences for Rwanda. Kivuwat produces around 30% of the annual electricity consumed in Rwanda. American company Contra Global, which owns Kivuwat, launched the Lake Kivu Venture in 2015 and for a time considered expanding its capacity from 26 to 100 megawatts. Another company is exploring the possibility of launching its own 56 megawatt gas extraction venture on Lake Kivu. There are no plans in the short term for such a project on the Congolese side. Now, how long will it take to deplete these vast gas reserves will depend on the pace of extraction, said Martin Schmidt, a researcher at the Swiss Institute for Water and Environmental Research. He said, just with Kivuwat alone, it will take, I don't know, centuries to have really a reduction of methane from the lake, he said. This is by Agency France Press on Science Alert. This is the only one in the world. This is the only place in the world where this is going on by Kivuwat, owned by an American company. So you can imagine what uh, methane reserves can do for producing uh, energy around the world. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. This is by Marion Duet, AFP on Science Alert.